Hi there, this is Ben Stubbs of the Flamenco Guitar Podcast, and in this video I wanted to give you a guide on how to read tablature, or tab, if you've never done so before. So tab, as you can see, looks really similar to a treble clef. It's got both horizontal lines, but it doesn't have the same amount of lines. So the number of lines for the treble clef are five, whereas tab, or tablature, has six lines. Why is that? That's because the tab lines represent the strings of the guitar, and then the treble clef lines just represent the range of notes on the staff. So we're going to concentrate on this tab here. And let's visualize what this means. So here, let's picture that we've got the tuning pegs of the guitar. We're going to look at this tab, these tab bars, as if we're looking at the guitar facing right towards us. So here's our headstock. Sorry about the crude drawing. Here's the neck. Here's the body. Okay, And here's the sound hole. Here's our saddle. And here are our strings going across all the way. Okay, my apologies once again for the crude drawing. So this is what we've got. These are the strings along the guitar. And what these numbers mean is the number of frets or the number of fret that we're going to put our finger on. So let's go ahead and just erase this guitar here. And let's zero in on what these mean. So this first note right here, one, means the first fret. And then look along what string it is. This is the sixth string. All right? So that's what that means. And I should say that these are sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, third string, second string, and first string. All right? And then all these numbers mean the frets on that particular string. So we got a first finger here on the first fret of the sixth string or E string. We've got an open zero, that means no fingers on the A string or the fifth string. We've got the second fret, and then another note that comes right after that, third fret, and so forth. So you can see the pattern here. We're placing our fingers on the strings, and the numbers represent the frets for that particular string. Next, that comes to the fretting fingers. How do we know which fretting finger to use for any particular fret. Right here, if you look up, corresponding directly to the number of frets are the notes right above. And to the left of the note, you're going to see this number. That number represents your fingers for your uh, left hand. So if I have a picture of my fretting fingers here, and this is the inside of my hand, okay, is the palm of my hand, we've got thumb, which we don't we don't count for the uh, fretting uh, fingers for the flamenco guitar. But what we do count is index is one, two, three, and four. So we know that this number here, two, corresponds to our second finger. So we know that when we need to play this second fret on the fifth string, which is a B note, we know that we're going to use the second finger for that note. We look on, on to the C note here, the third fret of the fifth string. We can see, just looking up, and we zero in on this three, which means it's a third finger. All right, so now we know what finger to use. So when you're reading tab, you're gonna be looking at the numbers, and if you have any doubt about what finger you need to use, just look up here and it will tell you. If it doesn't tell you, then you're just to assume that it's gonna be the same finger as the number. So in this case, two, two, three, three. If those were blank, those weren't there, you would just assume that you're going to use fingers number two and three for the B note and the C note. Does that make sense? Hope so. Next, we're dealing with our right hand, so our strumming hand. How do we know which fingers to use? Here, we've got the marker. It tells us what finger to use. So for this note here, F, we look up once again, and then below these notes, you're gonna see the finger, the right hand finger you're going to use, which is P, pulgar, that's your thumb. So you're going to use your thumb for all these notes until it tells you otherwise. We come up to here, we see the next marker, the next indication, P also. Okay, so we just continue on P. Sometimes it's a little redundant, but I'll put here P, just so you know we're still using our thumb. Then 
this note right here, or this note, they correspond with each other. Those both use finger I, the index finger. So if we're holding up our hand, our right playing hand, with our palm facing us, here's our palm, <laughs> and then here is P, pulgar, this is index, middle, A, and E for the pinky finger. So here, once again, we've got open string that's played with the thumb. We have another open string here on the first string, which is the high E string, and that corresponds with our right playing finger of I, index, for this note. Okay, so see how they all line up perfectly. You just raise your eye up and it tells you more information about your left fretting fingers and your right playing fingers. Here, what's this? This is an H. This means hammer on or legato. So you've got right here an E note and then an F note. And it's tied together by this. So this is going to let you know they're tied together in some way. This is going to tell you what that relationship is. It's going to tell you how they're tied together. It means hammer on. If you ever see this note right here, something like this, this marking, sorry about that, H and P, and you see the two notes together like that, that means hammer on, pull off. So in that instance, you might see something that looks like this, two, three, zero, like that. And then you see a binding line a connecting line for all of these and then it would say hammer on pull off like that next we see something new this is an arrow a direction arrow so once again we want to look at the guitar from a certain perspective we want to look at look at it like it's facing us we're holding it we pick it up and we hold it and it's facing us our tuning pegs, our sound hole, saddle, and strings. So this arrow is going to tell us to go downward, to strike downward on the strings, like that. So it's pointing up, but really, since the guitar is facing us this way, our hand is moving downward, and that really means down. So. Now going back to the tab, what finger do we use? So here are the notes. P is marking this note right here, this G sharp, and there's no indication for these two notes. So you're just to assume you're still using the thumb because that was the last um, marking that you saw for the right playing fingers. So you have a downward play or strum of these two notes, the E and the B. And then you see this whole section right here is just a repeat. So in this case, you're not going to see the fingerings all the time, like you see here, because since it's just the same as this first part, you're to assume that it's the same fingerings. If you just look at these two patterns here and here, they're the same. So you can visually get the message that this right here is going to be the same as here, as far as the fingerings. And then finally, you may have noticed that there's these asterisks up here. And those correspond with notes like this F here and this E right here. Let me go ahead and erase everything here. Okay, that's connected to this F and that's connected to this E. And you see another note right here. These two notes, those are connected with that golpe. So that's what it is. It's a golpe. Where on the guitar is that golpe? What finger do you use? So by default, if you see an asterisk here in my sheet music, it means that you're going to use your A finger. That's going to be your ring finger on your right playing fingers. That's going to be on the bottom part of the rosette. At the same time, you're playing P. So you may be familiar with that movement. Your thumb and then your ring moving at the same time. So you're striking a note and you're doing a golpe at the same time. 
If you ever see an asterisk below here, below the notes, the staff, it's usually going to say M along with it. And that's going to let you know that you're going to be using your middle finger for a pop or ache golpe. Or ache golpe, I should say. An axe golpe. And you, you might see those uh, from time to time in different videos that I make. So that's what that means if you see an asterisk below the staff. Once again, if you see it above, that means it's going to be your ring finger doing the golpe. And I should mention right here, we've got a chord chart. If you've never read a chord chart before, here's how we read it. So once again, just to give you a visual perspective of how to read this chord chart in this direction. Most of the time, it's upright like this. So here's our crudely drawn guitar. And then here's the, the neck, here's the body. Here's the sound hole, saddle, strings. So those strings are going to correspond with those vertical lines that you see right here. So let's take a look. We've got our sixth string right here, fifth, fourth, third, second, and first. And then these black dots, they represent your fingers, your finger positionings. That's where your fingers are actually going to be placed along the strings, along these frets. These empty circles right here, these represent open strings. What this is, is an F major 7 um, sharp 11th chord. So it's like a bar chord, except instead of a bar chord along all the strings, you're going to just press here with the first fret, with the first finger, and these two are going to be open. Here are the numbers of the fretting fingers. So you got first finger here on the F, third finger here on the C, fourth finger here on the F, and second finger here on the A note. And that's pretty much it as a brief explanation of uh, tablature and how to read it, and what it means, fingerings left and right, and little markings that pop up here and there. Like I said, it doesn't cover everything, but it covers pretty much most of the markings that you need to um, be familiar with in order to read tab or write tab or make notes here and there. So I hope that helps, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care. Bye.